Storyboards are an effective and powerful part of the design toolkit. We use them to come up with new ideas for products. We use them to communicate between ourselves in teams. We use them to pitch our products to uh, investors. We use them in interviews to show our power as designers. In short, having a great storyboard is a very important part of creating a great product. I'm Dr. Chris Parker, and today we're taking a deep dive into storyboarding. By the end of this video, you will be able to describe what a storyboard is, why designers create them, and when storyboards should be produced when designing new products. You will be able to recognize the key steps a designer goes through in creating an effective storyboard for any context. Now, I want to add that there are no rules in storyboarding. You know, I'm going to say what I do, I'm going to say what I found effective in my work as a designer, but you might have a different perspective. You might have another way of working and more power to you. Take what I give you in this, mix it with what you're working and create something brand new. After all, design is a creative activity. It's not a step of prescribed steps. But let's take a look at how this can be done. So I'm going to give you an overview of what storyboarding is. Then I'm going to show you how I storyboard and then some advice on working in groups to create storyboards because storyboarding isn't the end result. Storyboarding is a process you use as a designer to create better ideas. Now, lots of my work as a UX designer, it's all about storytelling. It's saying, can you imagine the lives of people, how they are now? Can you imagine how they will be enhanced by this app, this service, this product, whatever it is? And it's all about that enhancement. The way we think about it is by drawing a storyboard and telling stories. So let's have a look at overview of storyboarding what it is, why we do it, and what we do with storyboarding. So start off with, what is a storyboard? So a storyboard is a graphical representation of how your product will play out, visually showing what, when, and how it happens. Now this is, again, just communicating things, just like a comic book. You know, you don't need Stan Lee sitting over your shoulder talking to you about his creations. The comic book itself tells the story. It's graphical representation of all the lives and emotions of the characters. A storyboard in design is the same thing. Sure, it may not be entertaining as a Marvel comic or a DC comic, but it's got really similarities. You are communicating ideas through visual stories, and you're showcasing how they fit into the lives of users. So that's a full picture. It's going, this product you have, here's how it's used. This is how it enhances the world around us. This is how it's creating impact. And when someone sees the uh, storyboard, they really have a great sense of it. Now, storyboarding started back in um, the early days with Disney, probably even before that, but they really pioneered the technique. So you can see how it's gone from simple sketches of Smee and Captain Hook to being actually built into the fantastic, you know, Peter Pan from the 60s, 50s. Either way, you think it through because... When you have a storyboard, you can say, well, this is how we think it will go. What do you think? We, and someone else can then say, well, yes, no, or whatever. Then you can make changes, make quick changes about how the product enhances the life rather than just the product itself. Now, why do we storyboard? Now, we storyboard because it helps people intuitively understand your idea and how it fits into the world and giving visual form to those ideas that helps others understand them more clearly. That is the definition of IBM uh, from IBM Design Thinking. And that's a great way because it really is, you can talk about a product as it features or how it looks, but it really is the meaning it has to people that you need to communicate to make your product worth existing. The storyboard must focus on that enhancing meaning part rather than just the functions. Now, why do I say this? Now we've got um, different watches here. Now what's the difference? is how they look. And how they look in aesthetics is an important part of design. It's, yeah, okay, it's good, but uh, none of these watches will become an instant classic just because they look a bit differently. We need a bit more. So, okay, we can chuck some functions on. We can make it work a bit differently. Now it's getting interesting. So we've got style, we've got function, but there's a lot of that. You open a catalog for anything like Argos in the UK, You'll see a million different products that work a bit different, a few features look a different way. But at some level, they're all kind of equal. There's 
nothing that really stands out. Um, stand out, you have to have meaning. It must mean something to you in a different way. So this is an example of a watch for blind people. It turns the time into braille. So you can always tell the time, no matter if you can see or not. Now this is great because it's turned a watch from something which the blind community had no use for to being something which is integral and letting them enjoy just being on the time, just like everyone else. So that's a very meaningful product. It it does something that no other watch does, not just because it looks different or works different, but because you know it, it achieves something in your life that nothing else does. Then of course you think about changing the watch itself. Now the Apple Watch, sure, it's a watch, but it's more than a watch. It's it's a personal weight tracker, it's a personal fitness tracker, it's personal time measurement, it's email, it's messaging, it's suddenly your heartbeat. And now we live in a world where smartwatches are a thing. We can never think of the watch in the same way again. So we change how we understand things. So what is the point of a storyboard? It's not to say how it looks and how it works. Well, that is going to be part of it. But it's communicating the meaning your product has to the user and maybe even how they think about the product as being completely different now they have yours. And that is communicating what's special about your work and your product, not just that you have a product. Now, we focus a lot on um, this top area, design thinking um, at Loughborough University, because that is what makes it important. These are the products that change the world. If you want to create a product that changes the world, it's really important to think about the meaning and uh, how people think about your product afterwards. So why are stories so powerful? Because they are visual, they are memorable, they are empathetic, and they create engagement. We understand images faster than text as humans. It's the way our brains work. And when we have a story, it is 22 times more memorable than pure facts because we know the journey, we get engaged, it drives into our brain, into our um, psyche, better than just numbers do, better than just facts. So communicating the story is a great way to make your product have impact in that design phase. Storyboards of empathy. Now, stories of empathy, we understand why it's meaningful. It's not just the appearance, it's the life. It's great. And engagement stories capture our attention. They draw us in. They ask us to be a part of it. And we, in some ways, live them. So using stories to drive our products forward, drive our engagement forward, is a very important part. So we know why we storyboard, but when do we do it? Now, you can use storyboards once you know the problem you're trying to solve and for whom. Draw a storyboard anytime you need to share an idea for a user's future quickly and visually. This is a really important quote from IBM. Lots of designers will wait until the end of the design process. They've got everything sorted, they've thought everything through, and they go, yep, now's the time to make a storyboard and show. Okay, sure, you should do a storyboard at the end, but why don't you do it at the very start? You might just have a vague idea of what your product is. You might just have this concept that it's a box doing something. Okay, what does it do? What are the people? What are the problems? What do they do with this? And how does it change their life? Once you understand those issues, you can start to give form and draw the product that does this thing. But the storyboard of understanding these emotions and journeys and lives and kind of interactions you want that's something you don't just get from sitting through, you have to live it a bit. The storyboard gives you an idea to live it. So in the discovery phase, now you're discovering the problems, then you can start to communicate the emotional issues, the challenges people face, and the kind of uses they have in a way that you can't just do by listing it or bully pointing it. The story element makes it real, makes it exciting. And of course, when you're building products, when you're in that final design area, you're showing how users interact with the thing you've really made. So you're basing your story on research, you're having lots of data driving your insights, not just made up, it's real insights into where things are going. You don't just sit in the corner thinking, you go, well, my users do this kind of thing, so I'm gonna draw it to show this kind of thing. And you can show your storyboards to your other members of the team and say, this is what I'm thinking, this is the kind of, use I'm imagining. This is how it integrates into their life. What do you think? And then go, oh, 
that's not how I imagined it. I thought it was something else. You know, I thought they used it this way. And maybe they're, you're both right and you have two storyboards. Maybe you go, oh, well, maybe there's another way we could do this. What about this? And you can redraw it. So it is a very useful skill later on. So how do you go about doing this? Now, how do you go and create your storyboards? Well, I'm going to give you five steps to... Um, uh, five steps to go through when doing storyboards, going to use some tips on how to think of it, and then an example storyboard to appraise. So five tips, five steps. If you do these five things, you'll create a better storyboard. Start by gathering data. So go and interview your users, interview the salespeople, interview people impacted or you want to impact. Watch them as they live their lives. No, just go to a coffee shop and see what people are doing. Go to the streets, go to the shops, go to the library. Go wherever your people are doing their thing. Watch them to understand the flow and their challenges. And you know what? Reading journal papers and conference papers is a great way to get an insight into this. There are great people who've done the research for you. Take their insights and use it. Once you've got data, you need to think about, right, I need to make a flow. What is a flow? A flow is one example of use. Now, all products are going to have many uses. So the example I've got here is a cutthroat razor can be used to shave. It can be used to open letters or it can be used to cut a throat. But shaving is definitely the use that we care about the most. So identify the most useful flow of your product and base your work around that. Then identify relevant data that supports that flow. Now, why do you collect data and then the flow rather than go, well, here's the flow, what data is important? The reason is that when you collect data, you are really free to explore all possibilities and learn from it. When you have the flow, you narrow your scope. You need to start out with a really broad, open mind, and it could be that something that you never thought about before leads you to the flow you finally choose. So discovery is very important. So once you've got your your research and your flow, you need to write down the plot, write down you know, who are the people involved, who are the characters. You know, obviously there's a user, maybe there's someone who impacts them, maybe there's someone who they influence, maybe there's somebody just on the side that has to be part of this. What is the challenge that the user is facing? This is something in their daily lives that they can't currently solve. And that's the reason for doing grid design. You're giving a new solution to an existing product uh, problem. Action. What are the actions people use whilst interacting with your product? This is the use part. You don't have to have all the answers right now. But think about, you know, what, how would you use the product? You know, step by step, go through. And finally, the resolution. How does your product change their world and change their life? When you have these four elements in your storyboard, your storyboard is effective. Now, think about this. Um, Lord of the Rings, a great book. We start in Hobbiton. We meet the Hobbits. We meet Gandalf. We learn about what happened in The Hobbit before Lord of the Rings. That creates grounding. We know the people. We know what's important, that we want to preserve the life in Hobbiton. The challenge is that they meet and go, well, this is the ring. If we don't destroy it, then the whole world will be in darkness. And that means no more Hobbiton. Oh God, so... We have to destroy the ring. Right, now we know what we're doing. The action is most of the book. It's traveling around the world, killing monsters and all that kind of stuff. And the resolution is going back to Hobbiton at the end and see how it's changed. It's safe. It's there. But it's not the same. The world's moved on. The events of the book have changed everything. and The world will never be the same again. And the people are never the same again. Now, if you remove any of those parts from the book, it doesn't make sense. If you give the challenge without telling people who they are, then why do we care about it? We need to go to Hobbiton to know that there's something happening, to empathise. We can't take the challenge out because then why the hell are you running around the world? We need to know that. Definitely can't you take the action out, otherwise what's the point of the book? Um, there's that thing about why don't they just fly to the mountain on the eagles rather than be rescued them? Because there's no action then. You know, you've got to have the action to have a good story. And then finally, resolution. You've got to know that your story is over and got to know how the change has happened. Otherwise, it's just action, and it's like, well, what's the point of that? You must have all these parts, just like your storyboard must have all of those. Write them down. 
Think about them first and then draw a storyboard. Don't just think you can draw and have everything great. Once you've got your storyboard outlined, start adding emotional detail. So you can add emojis, you can add feelings, thoughts, notes, whatever. Um, just think about you know, how people are feeling at each stage. What are they doing? What's going through their mind? What does it remind them of? Anything at all, at all. Any important detail. It's time to give your story life. Give it emotion. Give it depth. And then finally, once you've got all this, you create the storyboard to play out the parts of what you've just written. Now, I really recommend using post-it notes to just quickly sketch something because then if one frame is wrong, it's easy. Take it down, throw it in the bin, redraw it. If you forgot a phase, then you can quickly just put a new one in. If you think of something else that you want to move around, okay, you can remix this until it works. It's a great quick way. Now, I you can do it on paper, but hey, post notes are king. On that note, I'm going to give you three tips that help you create better storyboards. So you can go through those five steps, but this will help you do it more effectively. Firstly, you don't have to be an artist. It There are no prizes for great first attempts. You can always go back and redraw it later on and make it look as nice as you like, but the first time you're just getting the story right. It doesn't matter how ugly it looks. If you don't feel confident as an artist, it does not matter. You can get someone to do the drawings later on. You can say, hey, you're great. You won't draw this for me. Get the ideas down. The ideas, the story is what sells, not the art. You really, If you're in doubt, map out the beginning and the end of the story. Leave the action you know, to last. So, okay, we know the people. We know the problem and the challenge they're facing. What change do we want? What's our goal? You know, what impact do we want in the world? Right, that's where we're going. How can we make it happen? What actions lead towards that impact? Once your team has created a storyboard, this is where you can start mixing and matching. So if there's two or three of you in the team, make your own storyboards. And then you can go and present your version to the whole team. Then give each member of the team something like a sticker or a star, just something that they can go, yeah, this is a part of the story I really like. This is a great insight. This is great behavior, great problem, whatever it is. And then you can take the best parts, the best post notes, mix and match and create a great storyboard that sums up the whole team's ideas, the whole team's opinions, so that everyone's really co-creating this great experience that the product will fulfill. You might not know how you'll do it, but you'll really you know, uh, get something far greater than the sum of parts. Same thing, when you're actually making a final idea and just communicating it, you might have different ideas of how you can communicate it. So the post-it note idea, sharing, mixing, matching, and working together is a great way to achieve that kind of shared vision of putting your product over in the best way possible. So I'm not going to show you an example storyboard and pull it apart a bit for critique. So this is, by all accounts, quite a good one from some student work. But who's the characters? Okay, top left, they've got an angler. But who's the angler? Is he professional? Is he a starter? Does he have disability? Who, who knows? What's his problem? Now, I, I don't fish. I've never been fishing. I've heard that you throw bait into the middle of the river which I, I guess this product helps with, but I don't know. I really don't know. So there's no characters. There's no emotional issue. There's no problem. We're jumping straight into the action of use. But because we don't know any of the background, this is meaningless. It This might be the greatest solution to a problem known to man, but we don't know that. Similarly, at the end, what does this change? No, how have we met the problem? Well, we haven't given the problem, but hey, at the end, um, the thing drops bait, it drops bait in the river and returns to you. How has that changed his life? What's the impact? Uh, does he fish more? Is he more relaxed? Is he more effective? Does he get out more often? Uh, has he saved time? Does he save money? I don't know. So this is a real truncated story. Think of losing the opening, the challenge, and the resolution of Lord of the Rings, and just having action. The story is not as powerful. Same way here. 
This is, in many ways, a very good storyboard in communicating the action, and it doesn't communicate what we need to make the full picture. This is the same kind of thing. Another great storyboard. Who are these people? Now, what, what, it says there's a carer. I guess it's the person with longer hair, but I don't know. Why does he, this person need to use the device? Why is he using an app? What, what is this about? Has this person had five heart attacks and they're going to die? Is the person just a bit lazy? I don't know. Give me people. Who are they? Let me empathize with them. Let me understand them. Give me their challenge. Let me understand that. Give me the action and then give me the impact. Has, has this person survived longer? Does this person come off medication? Does it save time with caring? All of these things we need to know. Same thing here. This is a bike navigation thing. Why do we need a bike navigation app? Why does it, what's the problem we need to solve? Surely that people have been doing bike riding and couriers for a very long time. Why do we need anything special? I don't know. So when you're creating this, always start with a story. Seek, think about setting a plot, pick a scene, show the plot development. Make sure you include major shifts and settings. Then you illustrate your story. Think of the story like a comic strip, combine everything quickly and work together. Then you illustrate further, add further embellishments, make it better, move those post-notes around, make things really work. And make sure that you do have that um, character. Make sure you do have that problem. Make sure you have great actions with emotion and empathy. And then show the resolution. Make sure that you've got how the world changes as an integral part. And then finally, you show this to your team. Share everything. Tell about the common elements. Tell about what you're trying to convey. And get ideas to put new parts in. Work around those. Really make it a powerful item. So, we've done this. We've looked at how to storyboard. What about some advice for working in a team? How would you effectively work when there's multiple people coming up with ideas um, and trying to communicate them through a storyboard? Well, the seven principles. Firstly, right before you talk. There's no ideas. Stay focused. Getting everyone to participate. Staying engaged. And start on time and stay on time. So, what is this? So, firstly... Before you talk, you know, write it down. Now, you've got an idea, sketch it, write it. And then you can talk about that during discussion, but capture your idea before you talk. There's also no bad idea. So it doesn't matter how crazy you think your idea is, that can inspire you or someone else. So always think about what could we see? What could we learn? Someone's got a crazy idea on the board. Go, okay, what does that inspire me to do? What does that make me think? Let's use this rather than shut it down. You want to have so much positivity, even if you know that things are never going to work. Go, right, how can we make it work? See it as a challenge. And always stay focused on your user. You know, when you're creating storyboards or thinking about team, it's not about you being better or them better, but which idea communicates the user better and helps um, solve the user problem better? Really keep the user at the very center. Now, when you're doing teamwork, make sure that everyone participates. It doesn't matter if you're the senior designer. It doesn't matter if you are, think you're the best artist. Every single person contributes. Everyone has ideas. Everyone gets parts brought in because everyone has something to share. Even if it's just like one or two parts of the storyboard, everyone can contribute. You've really got to stay engaged. So when you're doing, um, when you're doing uh, teamwork, when you're working together, just try and go right. We're not going to talk about Game of Thrones. We're not going to talk about um, whatever happened tonight down the pub. We can do that afterwards. This is the time we're focusing only on creating stories and saying them. It's a good idea to give yourself a goal and say we're going to do this by this time and then work towards it. Now that might mean that we're going to do two hours a day and two hours tomorrow. And that's more effective than saying do two hours a day and hair might run over. That's just because when we have time limits, we tend to try and meet them. And also, if you mean we're going to do some more tomorrow, that time between gives us time to think and reflect. And finally, you want to think about um, going, yes, that's really great, but we, that's a great idea. But what about this? So rather than saying, no, it's not good, say, yes, it's good, but what? So don't dismiss ideas outright. So let's recap what we wanted to do. We want to describe what storyboard is, why designers create them, and when storyboards should be produced when designing new product. We've done that. 
We want to recognize the key steps a designer goes through in creating an effective storyboard. We've done that. Now, it's now your job to go out and practice creating a storyboard using the tips in this video. So go back, pause it, play it, and work through the tips and guidelines I've given you today to be an effective designer. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and find it useful, please subscribe to the channel, um, like, comment, subscribe, everything helps the channel grow. And also listen to the Usability Podcast, broadcasting every week on Apple M Music, sorry, Apple Podcasts, they've changed, haven't they? Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Himalaya, iHeartRadio, and everywhere you find your podcasts. I've been Dr. Chris Parker, thank you very much.